Hello everyone, welcome to session six of day two of Event Tech Live US and Canada. Joining me for this session is John Martinez, the father of actually Johnny that we had on earlier today. So it's a, it's a Martinez day for, the, for Event Tech Live here. John is the CEO and founder at ShotLogic. John, thank you for joining us, joining us on this session today. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. John, your session today is reimagining virtual and hybrid events, how to maximize engagement and drive attendance. I think the hottest topic of the day. So I'm going to hand over to you. The floor is yours. Look forward to hearing your presentation. Great. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. So what am I? Um, my name is John Martinez. I am the CEO and founder here at ShockLogic. And uh, thank you to the Event Tech Live uh, team. Um, and, you know, you've been working so hard, guys, to make this work. And uh, congratulations. It's looking fantastic. So I've been, I started ShockLogic in 1997, but before that, um, I, I spent the first 14 years of my career as a PCO, as a professional conference organizer working for my PCO called Congrex. So I worked with Congrex for 14 years before I started Shock Logic in 1997. So I'm, you know, I'm very old. I just look very, very young. And, um, and before that, then I, I was a quantum physicist. So I'm a proper nerd, you know, I'm a proper geek. So I've spent the my whole career creating technology for event organizers. I am personally passionate about um, the development of human potential. So the thing that I enjoy the most is to see my team grow and, and flourish and, 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 and actually develop. So this bit is a little bit to, to, to tell you why should I be here talking to you and, and why should you listen to me? Why should you pay attention to anything that I'm saying? Um, so I've been, in the events industry and uh, events technology for the best part of you know 30 plus years and um and running shock logic for since 1997. so we're a family-run company uh my son was here uh um recently that's the guy here on the left uh, standing with me and uh, with less hair than me and um he normally wears a hat so you must have seen it with, with a hat but also with an orange shirt so the the so it runs in the family um we, we're, we're a tight group with about 70 plus people in the company and we support mainly association events and um so we're very into the association market we have a number of corporate clients but mainly in that area so my experience the one i'm going to share today with you is going to come from from the little keyhole that i'm looking at the world right from the from the set of glasses that i wear uh, in order to look at the world. Uh, at ShockLogic, we're a value-based company, and we we believe, uh, we have a set of values, and we're very, um, it's very strong culturally, it's very strong and very important for us. We believe that we want to be kinder than necessary because everyone that we come across is fighting some battle, and the word kindness is repeated a lot in my company. It's, 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 it's something that we say a lot. We also believe, believe that, um, uh, we want relationship with integrity, and therefore, is it a win-win or no deal? And that's pretty much the fact. We have an approach that we call "Don't make me think," um, which means that it should be intuitive. And it comes from a from a, a book from Stephen Krug. And if you if you haven't if you haven't read it, I tell you anything anyone that is related to marketing, please read it. It's urgent. It, it, it's going to blow your mind. It's fantastic. It's a very thin book, but it's fantastic. So everything that we do. We aim to be intuitive. You, you should just get it. You don't have to, you shouldn't have to think. And the company is a gorgeous kaleidoscope of ethnicities and accents, um, um, you know, uh, from all over the world. And we're spread all over the, all over the world. So, and, and I actually, I'm actually in love with each one of the members of my team. And we have a similar relationship with our customers who some of them are being with us for the best part of 15, 16 years. So when it comes to virtual and hybrid events, what, what are the advantages, right? So I, I, know, I know I'm talking to the converted here, um, but why, why uh, virtual hybrid events? And uh, we, we believe that, you know, it can be global. We recently had a conference, uh, a regional conference in Latin America, 
where they had 59 international speakers. It would have been impossible for the, that event, if it was a face-to-face -face event or in-person event, to, to be able to do that. So they're sustainable, flexible, they save time, reduce costs, extend the event life cycle, right? So we can finally, that peak that would happen with the event and then the attention goes down, we're able to keep it if we can keep the event going and keep the content on demand, et cetera, et cetera, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about rocket science here, but it's just that some of the things are so intuitive that we tend to um, take it for granted. So what kind of experience do I want to deliver to my delegates? Um, to my attendees. So this is this is one of the first questions that we want to ask ourselves, you know, when we are um, involved with virtual or hybrid events. So the, the 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 question is the other question is how is technology going to make my life easier, right? Because technology for technology's sake it doesn't make any sense. It has to have a purpose. So the um, the and the other thing is that okay. Let's identify what we mean with engagement and, um, and why is that important. So we believe that there are um, three main reasons to organize any event. One is content distribution, be it poetry, music, if it's a concert, be it um, science or marketing or a product launch, um, etc. So it's, it's a content that's being distributed. Um, the second one is to connect people, right? Is that um, there's this um, one of the most um, popular TED Talks from a woman called Brene Brown, and I totally recommend that you see it. Um, she, she says that we are wired to connect. We're wired to be connected and we're wired to, um, to live by that connection. And, and a lot of our sense of worth comes from our connections. So that's the second. And the third one is to create experiences, right? To, to create emotions and to create uh, uh, feelings in, uh, in, um, in, in what we do. And, and then why is engagement important? It is important because of that reason, because we are truly, truly in our, our best when we connect. And that's said to you by a, a geek. <laughs> um, so, we view the uh, virtual and hybrid events in, in, in three um, sort of a two, two larger groups. One is something that we define as webinars. With uh, a webinar, we see as a you know one hour event, two hours event. You know, it happens short, concise. It could be it could be a meeting. You know, that we we define as an event. And the other one is complete events or full fledged events. And um, and we see this full-fledged event of different types. You will have different type of budgets and different type of needs, and uh, and it could be of of different uh, sort of um, um, categories. Um, and what we also um, find is that depending on how that full-fledged event, in the virtual sense or hybrid sense, how much design is involved in it, so it will be more or less. In immersive, the experience uh, will be more or less immersive. It will depend on how we, um, what are we interacting with, and then a lot of it will have to do with audiences. There are audiences, you know, the horse for courses, and um, there are audiences where a more um, visual and graphical um, platform will be very, very well suited for them, and there are other audiences that it will not. So. In what areas can event offer engagement and that will drive attendance? And what other stakeholders should be taken into account? So we see basically five areas, right? We see the program or the content, sponsors or those that are actually paying for it. If you have an exhibition, the thing is that if you have sponsors and exhibitors, you need an exhibition as such. Um, the networking, so the connecting the people and support, which is right now everybody needs, needs help. And we see that once you land in the virtual auditorium, you're going to need at least this nine elements. You need, you need the virtual auditorium to be fully branded, to be browser based, to have a waiting room so you can create a green room, to view speakers and slides simultaneously, similar to what's happening here. You see me and the slides. Um, to have a Q&A that's moderated with upvoting, the same, very similar to what you're using right now. To have a moderated chat, to have a list of attendees, to be able to have um, um, uh, downloads or, 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 or handouts or slides and note taking. So these are the nine elements that we see inside of the virtual auditorium. So what are the ways in which we can offer engagement um, in virtual events? 
Well, one of the most popular ways is gamification, and just being so quite a few um, uh, conversations here about gamification. Um, we want to turn our audience into active participants, right? And there's a number of things that we can do. So we can do live polls, we can brainstorming, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, polls, et cetera, et cetera, quizzes and challenges, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some of the ways on how we can bring the people together and how we can create an environment for, for checking in. So um, one example is that we, we run uh, um, um, recently is that uh, we place a little icon of uh, like a passport in every single or in a number of pages and it was a bit like it's having your home so whenever you got there you click on that passport and that will give you a um a set a set of points and then you would um win some prizes and um it worked really well it, 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 if you add um a leaderboard to that then it really triggers the competitive edge in people and uh, it makes people uh, really move forward. We we worked on a, on a, an event with a, a partner of ours uh, who is uh, attending this event, um, Bogdan Maran, amazing guy uh, from AMMP and also from from Twitch. Um, and what was done for that event is that uh, um, a, the gamification in this case it was an event about mobility, m mobile cities and mobility in cities. So it was uh, depending of with every single interaction that you that you made, you could accumulate, accumulate points. So you would either walking or you were in rollerblades or a bicycle, and then you can be in an e-tuk and then a taxi. And then after the taxi, you could be in a train and then a bullet train, that was the fastest. So this kind of um, thematic that would actually um, link people to actually what they're doing and put them there and make them want to, to play and make them want to compete and make them want to connect and 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 also um, um, promote that and recompense the the, the 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 connection. So to encourage you, Anthony, to take a tour through the to the whole to the whole event, right? And create scavenger hunts with leaderboards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, capture opinions in real time. So in this case, you know, either instant share results or um, obtain feedback um, in in real time. You know. Um, make it easy for people to give their opinion. So this can happen as quickly as possible. And um, when you come, when you are in the Q&A, then harness the best questions and then maybe share those, those questions with the speaker, get a, a deeper answer, and maybe you can share that, that kind of con a continuous way of um, sharing content with your audience doing one-to-one um, um, -one meetings or B2B meetings, very similar. It's one of the options here with uh, with Swapcard that very kindly are, are collaborating with um, uh, Event Tech and, and have done a fantastic job. So congratulations, guys. Uh, video calls and, you know, imaginative, imaginative uh, coffee breaks. So what are the kind of stuff that we can do there? And um, so one of the things that we did is that we created um, rotating coffee breaks. So you could actually, it would take you five, the coffee break was 15 minutes, but every five minutes you'll be, you'd be sent to a different room. Or you had subjects or you have themes. Uh, we have one event where they were, they were doing meditations in the morning or breathing exercises or in some exercising actually physically, there was a, a trainer um, there. Of course, messaging to be able to people to chat and connect with each other. And you can you can do this in many different ways. So if we look at this these two groups of events, and then um, how how would that be represented in each of the other um, uh, platforms? So the, the other style of platform. So this is something that we would call a standard experience, right? So where you have everything in one single screen, it's pretty um, straightforward. Everything is there. Um, you have the chat, the space, the communication, the Q and A, and and the streaming all in one single space. You can do uh, connections, one-to-ones, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you can have profiles for um, 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 exhibitors and, and sponsors. Then, then you can go one notch higher, right? So this would be something that we would call an enhanced experience. An enhanced experience, so you can see there's, a, there's, a, there's an agenda that would be, uh, could be shown in, in, uh, in whatever way you can follow that agenda by clicking on whatever is happening, you would jump into the, the presentations and then be able to have that on demand as quickly as possible, of course. And um, and to create um, sort of a stance or areas of interest for, for big sponsors. 
uh, and for people to be able to engage with them because at the end of the line, these are the guys that are paying everything. So I really thank um, all of the different sponsors here for you know their wonderful collaboration and, and, and chipping in so this can happen. And then this is something that we call a more like a like an enhanced experience and uh, um, uh, sorry, advanced experience. It's more, it looks like a lobby. It looks like a, for some some customers, this is absolutely what they're looking for because it gives their attendees a feeling that, okay, I landed somewhere. I, I am in this physical space. There's some customers that will not go for this, that this is not their, um, their cup of tea. Um, but we find that there is a balance between the three um, uh, groups. It's pretty equal, we find, we find that. And you can show that in different ways. So in this space, this is more like a, um, like a menu, we could say, right? So um, in many of these cases, we can actually drive the engagement. We can actually um, 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 through the interface and how that engagement is going to happen in the different ways that I shared with you before. So the, the um, partly of what um, we wanted to share today was to begin by giving you a lot of um, um, context and a lot of information and then be able to have a, a q a with um, with adam where we could actually um, bring out the richness out of this so you just don't see a whole bunch of slides but also also we can have a conversation after that on how we can make this happen and uh, and that um, um, advanced experience can come in many ways, shape, or forms, you know, you can actually, you know, pretend that you're arriving in the conference center with a with a logging area, and and, um, and you can do that in a multiple, in a, in a myriad of ways, and um, so the, 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 be able to bring the message home by making it as um, uh, realistic as possible. So this is what we call the advanced experience, and, um, or this would be an advanced experience, this could be a, a VIP um, a VIP room um, of a of a event. Um, you can also um, you know have a uh, this is also a VIP room where the, maybe workshops are being shown or this is a virtual auditorium where you can take people. If you're going to have an exhibition, you can have exhibition of different types. This could be a way to show an exhibition and then bring the engagement and bring the contact between all the all the stakeholders so engagement what is that it's, a, it's an opportunity for the attendees to contact the speakers for example and how directly can they can they can they get to 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 me for example in that case as a speaker but also to the sponsors and to the exhibitors and then among attendees contact between attendees so that could be an exhibition this could be an exhibition a little more graphical and a little more um um uh, ex, uh, present presented a different way um this would be, let's say, a, a VIP room or a um, virtual, um, uh, we, we call it um, hospitality suite, right? It's a hospitality suite, you know, that's not dressed and this would be, you know, dressed and, and this can be done, you know, it's not, uh, it's not rocket science, it's not um, uh, terribly, terribly uh, difficult. Um, you can have stands in different ways um, and show them like a stand or show a profile that you can have uh, videos and a gallery of photos and you know, company information, sponsors information. Um, and, and those stands can look in a, in a myriad of way and you can make it look as you want. I mean, we, we have, in some cases we have 3D uh, or we have had experiences with, with 3D where we're actually showing um, 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 the, the a bit like Google Google Maps or Google Street, you know, that you can navigate, um, not avatars moving, but you can still navigate the exhibition. It gives a little oomph, but it's not for every public. We understand that. Um, so you can have stands in different ways. So we, we we have pictured the world in this way, right? We have complete events and webinars, and then from complete events, you can we we find that the, you can more or less group them into three types. You can group it between you know, a standard experience, um, um, what we call an enhanced experience with the middle way, and then the advanced experience, which is, you know, graphically and physically, it looks it looks like a lobby and you can go into meeting rooms, et cetera, et cetera. And we believe that these are the five areas that you would be um, 
playing with and then where you need to put the attention to the content or the program. Um, sponsors, they are vital uh, to be taken into consideration in how they're going to get ROI by that connection. Um, exhibitors, and, uh, and this is an exhibition, um, and, and networking, um, so the connection between people, the connection between um, uh, individuals themselves, and then support, of course, it's going to be vital because the speakers will need support. The you know I had a session with the the, the team from um, uh, Hubilo, and, and and they guided me in order to do this right. And then, um, but then some of you might have experienced um, difficulties as you were coming to the platform and what where to find things and how that support works. And then and then the organizer um, in this case, of course, uh, in the team at Event Tech. Um, live are you know specialists in technology and events but that is <laughs> that is not the case ever with uh with the standard customers they, they all of this is new and it's our job to guide them through this um um uh, minefield so i have about 10 minutes so i'm 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 leaving about 10 minutes so we can have a conversation um adam um you can um you can come back on 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 stage and we can have a chat about this and uh, and find out how to um, how to answer some of the questions that might be coming and then and to make this more of a rich um, um, uh, presentation. Excellent presentation, mate. Love the format of that. Some really good ideas I think the audience can, can take away and implement. Um, we do have some questions, so let's get into it. I think this is a really interesting one. And the question is like, how do we engage attendees in different time zones? You know, virtual now allows us to, I guess, invite anybody anywhere in the world. Um, some events even might want to do that. They might want to have maybe a 24 hour event. Have you got any tips or advice there about how, you know, uh, organizers mm. might be able to kind of concentrate on the time yeah, zone in, aspect? In November, we had a 24 hours event. And um, the, the particularity with that event that we did that we, um, did in November was actually um, that they wanted the event to to always start at nine o'clock in the morning on a time zone. So they chose London, um, uh, Sydney, and and Los Angeles and San Francisco. Actually, San Francisco. And uh, so it had to start at nine o'clock in the morning on the right on the right um, time. In each one of these locations, so what we what we did was first of all have to make sure that the program and the agenda is shown in the local time, right? That is uh, something that I've seen. You know, it's very good because I although this happened in the U.S. When I look at the agenda here, the agenda is showing me my time. So, which is right, it's my experience. So, one of the things that um, worked very well on that case is to be able to realize that you're dealing with an individual that is having an experience. We also have had events that are running 24 hours, but it is one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning for somebody else. Is So the idea is when you're offering engagement, at what point is going to be that the audiences are going to be mixed? Um, one of the things that we found that's quite delicate is if you're running an exhibition, when are the exhibitors going to be available to deal with the audience? And when are the exhibitors, are they going to have somebody 24 hours? Hardly. So it's to create the mechanisms for this to be informed. So you know who is on and who is off. And then um, and that is there's a lot of the technology has to do with that. Not so much more, not so much more, not so much of the formatting, but a lot of the technology in order to know who is up at three o'clock in the morning. For me, like, you know, uh, I have a friend that whenever he's having a beer, he says, well, you know, I said, it's a bit early for have a beer. It's one o'clock somewhere, you know, uh, yeah. or six o'clock in the evening somewhere. So um, that is, uh, that would be my answer to that question. Excellent answer, mate. Excellent answer. Um, what's your favorite gamification idea? I know you showed us the passport earlier, which I thought was a, mm. a, an amazing way to engage yeah, we, the audience, but what's your we, favorite? It's one that we're doing, we're doing right now, which has to do with, um, it's a golf game. So it's, a, it's like scavenger hunt. Well, my favorite is the one that I like to apply the most because we, we have also done some that are very graphical. So you have to move things around a little bit like Tetris because it's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's a lot of 
people that are doing wonderful stuff out there and you can plug it in through an iframe and, and do a single sign on and stuff like that. But we're doing a golf um, scavenger hunt. So depending on how you answer the question is the shot that you had from the green. And then you accumulate points and those points are shown in the, um, with golf clubs. Uh, and that's it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun to uh, to implement. It's, it's for a client called the uh, European Venice Forum, um, which are having their event in, in August. And um, so we're having a lot of fun together. See, I think I will probably still be bad at that game because no matter whether it's physical golf or virtual golf, I, I can guarantee you I'd still hit a swing and miss. So, but it, it does sound fun at least to, at least to have a try. Um, John, another question here. Um, around associations and maybe um, the challenges around some people within associations convincing them um, to implement virtual engagement. Maybe there's a little bit of resistance by the sounds of this question there from associations yeah. to, to, to go down that route. Is that something you found? I think there's something that has happened is that um, in some cases, associations went out into the market because the thing with associations, right, in, 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 in contrast to corporate events is that they have to meet, right? So mm. we had a um, scientific events already in, in July last year, you know, some of our scientific clients. So academic events have to meet because those are the same people that we're meeting to find a solution to COVID, right? So we had a virology event where we had, you know, famous Dr. Fauci um, and that had to happen. So what I think happened to a many to many of them is that they went out, right, and the supplier wasn't ready. So mm -hmm. some of them got burned, and some of the exhibitors didn't get ROI because whatever they were doing, you know. So we're getting a lot of cost customers are coming to us after they've been burned, and they come. It's, they're, they're quite careful because they now there is this this is a resistance or this allergy to see what could happen. So what we find with association clients is as long as you explain what's going on, the, the, the other thing with association clients is that if you're running a scientific event that has abstracts, and this is going to go over the heads of anyone that only organizes corporate events, but if you do after submission or paper submissions, they need to be reviewed and need to be accepted and assigned to sessions, et cetera, et cetera. Then, you know, a, a, a presentation, it can be three minutes, three minutes presentation, and two minutes Q and A, so it is bang, 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 bang. So the production side of these events are killing because you have instead of having six, seven presentations in one or six, seven presentations in one day, you know, forty-five minutes each, you have this myriad of presentations. So I think it took some organizers and suppliers a bit with the guard down. And then, um, so the, 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 that sort of, uh, I think that if we want to be able to have associations step forward and be more forthcoming with virtual events, I think that we need to be very clear with them on what can be done. And, and, and then we have to come through. We have to be able to deliver because these events depend on an industry. Um, so the exhibitors and sponsors are gonna need to have ROI, otherwise they're not gonna come back. That's my feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a really interesting point that you make because we've, as an industry, as an entire industry, which is very unusual, mm. we've been thrust into having to adopt virtual events. And, you know, lots of organizers were adopting hybrid virtual streaming models. They were testing technology in how they could incorporate it. But actually what happened was we didn't have enough time as an industry to actually figure out iteratively yeah what actually works um and and maybe some people went out and tried too much too soon because they felt that they had to do something really big and bold so, in order to satisfy that, people you know we, we we have been um supporting our um some of our customers for five five to seven years we we have one particular client that we've been working with them for seven years in order to make what we call then three year four years ago we called it the transition to digital right so taken from from physical poster to e-posters, be able to know everyone had to record the sessions. You were able to watch the sessions in the mobile app and then and be able to move them, make them move to digital. But it would take us two or three years. But now this happened, it has to happen in three months. 
right? It has to, mm. it has to be like that. So what's gonna, so what happens is that um, this experience, the experience that was acquired through there really helped us. I mean, it was, it was, uh, um, I feel very lucky that we had had that experience and be able to, you know, a hybrid event, the Super Bowl is a hybrid event, football is a hybrid event, right? Because you got a lot of uh, remote audience and you have a live audience. So, and what happened for the longest time we thought, you know, I remember when there was a discussion, will football in TV work? That was absolutely, I know it sounds like madness, but it, it was that will football in TV, will people go to the stadium, right? And the, the answer that we have, and we have done a lot of data mining with this, the first question that we get from uh, organizers are, and from associations is, will the virtual event cannibalize my face-to-face -face audience? Of course, right now, there's no other option, right? But what's gonna happen in the second quarter of next year? We're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna be my, moving either into face-to-face -face or, to, or to hybrid, absolutely. And I think a lot of organizers that now have the taste of the virtual audience and now they understand, they, they don't know it, but, but they have created a, a, an audience, a, a remote audience. And, and this remote audience will pay to attend and will pay to consume the content. But the, the challenge is going to be that now you're going to have to add to this the virtual platform cost, the, sorry, the AV on-site cost to the virtual platform cost. So costs yeah. are going to have to really be measured there because the kind of cost that we see sometimes some uh, platforms out there are not going to work when, when yeah. events are virtual because the budget is the same budget, it's the same amount of money. And when we, with the virtual event, the virtual platform is the venue and the AV yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. And yeah. when you are um, in a hybrid event, you're going to need the equipment there. Yeah, absolutely. John, thank you very much for delivering this session. Really insightful, some great detail in there. For any of the attendees that want to follow up with John, he can be found on the platform. And I think he had some contact details on the end of his presentation. Um, John, thanks once again for coming along to the session today and joining us at Event Tech Live US and Canada. And for the attendees, we'll see you very shortly in the next session. Thank you.